So I'm gonna start talking about Galapagos, and first I'm gonna do a really simple kind of test case, just like before with the circles, just to show you uh, the basic parameters that Galapagos needs to do its optimizations. Uh, so I'm gonna hide all of this geometry for now. I'm gonna hide my sun geometry. I'm just gonna start from scratch, doing a really basic example of optimization. Okay, so what I'm going to do is create some simple geometry. I'm going to start with a circle, so circle CNR node again. For the center, I'm just going to um, create a point and set one point, type in zero, so this will be the origin. And then for the radius, I'm going to make an input slider and start it at 20.0. Okay, so there's my first circle. This slider is controlling the radius. Okay, so I'm gonna make another circle. And to make that circle, I'm gonna move this original point and make a new circle at the new point. So I'm gonna create a move node, plug in my point. Just rearrange it a bit. I'm gonna plug in uh, my point into the move geometry and as a uh, translation vector, I'm going to use the unit Z here. And for the factor, I'm going to plug in 10. Okay, that's a little too close. Maybe I'll change it. I'm going to increase it to 20. All right. So now I have a point that's tw moved 20 units in the Z direction from the original. I'm going to copy my circle node. And I'm going to plug in the new point as the center of that circle. So now I have two circles, each driven by their own radius parameter. All right. And I'm going to do that one more time. I'm going to copy the move, the parameter, and the circle nodes. And then here, I want to move the copied point, actually. And then I want to use the same 20 unit Z vector to translate. Basically what I'm doing is I'm taking one point, making two copies, moving it 20 units each time, and using it as a center to drive three circles, which each have their own radius parameter. All right, and the last thing I'm going to do is create a lofted surface between these three circles. I'm going to create a loft component, and then plug each circle into the loft one at a time, holding shift the whole time, so I get all three circles in here. All right, and now I, what I need is uh, a closed piece of geometry. Right now it's just like an open loft. So I'm gonna use the cap holes node, grasshopper, plug my geometry into there, I'm hide, the original loft, and now I have this capped solid object, which is the result of those three circles, and I can still use my parameters basically to drive the shape. It's a little bit too crazy right now, so I'm going to limit these inputs um, and set the values down to something more reasonable, like 50. So I'm just decreasing the um, maximum range of the sliders to 50 instead of 100. So you can see now there's sort of a maximum shape. And then for the minimum, uh, zero will you know error out because the circle uh, becomes invalid. So as the minimum, I'm going to set it to some pretty low but positive number, like 2. OK, so now there's a maximum shape, there's a minimum shape, and there's every shape in between. Okay, and what I'm gonna do now is basically plug in this geometry uh, construct into uh, the optimization plugin and have it tweak these parameters to give me a shape that maximizes the ratio of surface area to volume. Okay, so for the outputs, uh, we need Galapagos to measure something. So we're going to calculate the surface area and the volume of the shape. 
uh, by using the area component and the volume component. I'll plug in the geometry to both of those. And now I'll just make some text boxes, some panels to visualize those numbers. This will be surface area. This will be volume. And then the actual value we're going to minimize is the ratio of the surface area to the volume. So we'll just use the divide component. We'll divide surface area by volume. And this will give us our ratio. All right, and you can see that if I drag this over here, as we're changing our geometry, that ratio is actually changing. All right, so again, we're back to our uh, sort of optimization performance setup where we have a set of numerical inputs driving geometry, and we have one objective, which we want to either minimize or maximize. Um, so to start with Galapagos, you go to your parameters tab in Grasshopper, and at the very end, there's this Galapagos icon. It has these two cells. So you click on that, and you just create one of these nodes. And again, this is really simple. All it does is it takes in a genome, which is a combination of inputs, and one number, which is the fitness. And the fitness is that objective or criteria which you want to either minimize or maximize in your model. You drag this over here. Uh, we go from the genome into each one of our sliders. So it's like a kind of a different representation. It's this pink arrow. We plug that in here, and again, we hold shift, and we drag from the genome into every one of our sliders. And you can see that you've plugged this into Galapagos because the slider will actually turn pink. Okay, so now all of our inputs are connected. And then for the fitness, we connect our ratio. All right, so once we have the uh, inputs and the output uh, hooked up, we can double click into the node. And this brings up our Galapagos setup and analysis window. The first uh, tab is options, where we can set the options, the criteria of our optimization engine. So the um, Galapagos comes built in with two optimization engines, uh, one which is a evolutionary solver, so this is like a genetic algorithm, and then an annealing solver, uh, which has a different kind of um, algorithm. And I wouldn't worry too much about what these algorithms mean. Uh, to start off with, the evolutionary solver usually gives you the best results. So you can just start with that. Um, the main, and you don't have to worry too much about the settings. You can keep them at the standard. Uh, if you're really getting into this, you can look into what each one of these do to really control your um, optimization process. The main thing you want to set is up here. You want to basically tell Galapagos if you want to minimize or maximize your fitness number, okay? So this is really important. Um, in our case, we want to minimize the ratio, so we set this to minimize. A lot of times, uh, or sometimes you want to maximize something, like say you want to maximize the exposure to sun, you set this to maximize, okay? So it's really depending on your setup, what you set this to. So once you set that, um, you can go to solvers, and this will let you run the optimization process to try to um, uh, optimize the performance of your model. And the way this works is it's an iterative process. Once you hit run, it's just going to generate multiple solutions, analyze each one, and it's going to do a generation by generation. So first, it's going to generate 100 random samples. It's going to take the best performing samples. It's going to try to combine the uh, parameters or like the design of each one and produce better and better results. And that's why it's called a genetic algorithm. It's because it uses the ideas of survival of the fittest and genetics to breed better and better performing um, designs. Okay, so once we have this, we can hit uh, start solver. You see it right away it changes to something that's uh, already pretty good. Here you get um, a feedback about your process of your test. So this will give you uh, a readout of the performance at each generation. 
Uh, these markers tell you that at that generation, the design improved. By default, it's going to visualize the best performing result in the grass in the Rhino window. You can change those here. Either you can click uh, to display no results. This will speed up your optimization. You can also click display all results. And this will actually, every time it generates an example, it'll update in the window. Okay, so by default, this will run uh, generations until it reaches um, kind of a point where it's not really improving the, uh, the design that much. You can see all through here, the design is slowly improving. Now it's just kind of um, going around the same area and eventually if it doesn't keep improving, it's gonna stop, it's gonna converge um, on one design. At that point, it'll stop and the design that is in your window uh, will be reflected in the value of your parameters and that will be sort of the best design. So you can see here that you can get a lot of data about this process and about all the results, but this tool is really meant to be kind of focused on the ease of use. And if you set up a model, you can basically hit run, run it for a while, and then stop it, and you're gonna have already the kind of one of the best designs. All right, so um, if you don't wanna wait for it to finish, at any point you can hit stop solver. If you click okay, uh, these numbers will actually correspond to this model. So that's the basic setup. Uh, again, this is a really simple example. It's, it's nothing that you probably couldn't figure out on your own, but it just shows how easy it is to actually set up one of these models.